What really happened to Bobby Darren? Sadly, he was only 37. Singer Bobby Darren began his career during the heyday of rock and roll in the late 1950s, with his smash hit Splish, Splash. But he quickly branched out into other genres, including folk and country, and is now best known for his classic 1959 recording of Mac the Knife, which earned him two Grammy Awards. A popular nightclub entertainer, Darren was compared to singing great Frank Sinatra, and like Sinatra, also appeared in several films. Darren was born Walden Robert Casado in New York City, on May 14, 1936, had a harsh childhood. His father, a cabinetmaker, died a few months before he was born. Darren and his mother lived with his sister and her husband, and the family's impoverished state was deepened by Darren's severe childhood bouts with rheumatic fever, which produced high medical bills. He was such a sickly child that he did not attend school regularly until his early teens. He did, however, manage to read a lot and also learn to play the drums, piano, and guitar. But Darren's strongest ambition was not to succeed in music but rather to become an actor. In pursuit of this goal, he attended drama classes at Hunter College, but he became impatient when instructors gave other students chances to practice in leading roles even though they admitted his talent exceeded theirs. So Darren struck out on his own, getting jobs in Catskill resorts that ranged from busing tables to filling in for absent singers. Gradually Darren began to concentrate more on his singing than his acting. He was working writing and singing radio commercials when he was signed to a contract with Decca Records in 1956. Accounts vary as to how he selected his stage name. One says he picked it from a phone book, another that he got it from a malfunctioning restaurant sign advertising Mandarin Chinese food. The young crooner cut a few singles and secured an appearance on bandleader Tommy Dorsey's television show, but his vocal stylings did not capture the public imagination and Decca dropped him after a year. Darren was then signed by Atlantic Records, and recorded on their subsidiary label, Atco. Again, his first few records caused no sensations, but in 1958 Darren released one of his own compositions, Splish, Splash. Though Darren quickly followed Splish, Splash with another rock and roll ditty, Queen of the Hop, he did not wish to rely on the burgeoning genre for his livelihood. He was unsure that rock and roll would last, and felt that teenagers its primary consumers were fickle in their affections for performers. So, hoping to attract more mature fans, Darren took the money he made from his first hit and financed an album of standards, titled That S All. Included on that S all was a revision of composer Kurt Weill's song from playwright Bertolt Brecht's threepenny opera Mac the Knife. Released in 1959, Mac the Knife did for Darren all that he could have wished, selling over two million copies, and catapulting him to the pinnacle of the nightclub circuit. He became a featured attraction at the most prestigious Las Vegas showcases, such as the Sahara and the Sands, and by 1960 had played the famed Copacabana in New York City. Meanwhile, Darren was also getting his film career underway. Though he signed a film contract in 1959, he waited through many offers until he found the kind of parts he wanted to play. He made his screen debut playing an American in Italy in the 1961 film Come September. Darren also composed the title song, and met his wife, actress Sandra D on the set. Faring better than most singers who venture into acting, Darren won praise for many of his film performances, including his portrayal of a young American flirting with Nazism during the 1940s in 1962's Pressure Point, and he received an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor for his work in 1963's Captain Newman, M.D. Darren had other hit records throughout the early 1960s, including Beyond the Sea, You Must Have Been a Beautiful Baby, and The Country Flavored Things. And, unlike many other artists who began their careers with the advent of rock and roll, he managed to maintain his success into the late 1960s, scoring in 1967 with the folk song, If I Were a Carpenter. Darren also had political concerns at this time, 
and according to Steve Hockman in the Los Angeles Times, worked on Robert Kennedy's presidential campaign in 1968. Hockman further noted that the singer was devastated by Kennedy's assassination later that year, and after this event sold many of his possessions, moved to California, and recorded two albums of protest songs on his own label, Direction. Though Darren S. longtime manager Steve Bloner told Hockman, I was stunned at how good he was, singing Nairo and Tim Harden and Bob Dylan, Darren S. career began to languish somewhat. In the early 1970s, he recorded for the Motown label. In his personal life, in 1960, Bobby Darren married actress Sandra D., whom he met while making the movie Come September. They had one son, Dodd Mitchell Darren born in 1961. The couple divorced in 1967. Bobby married for the second time in June of 1973, to a legal secretary named Andrea Joy Yeager. The two were divorced in October of that same year, shortly before Bobby's death. In 1973, just months before his death, he hosted a short-lived musical variety show entitled The Bobby Darren Show. It ran from January 19, 1973 until April 27, 1973. Bobby appeared as both a singer and a sketch comedian on the show. His musical numbers were backed by a full orchestra. An ongoing theme of the show was to pay tribute to a different city each week through song and comedy sketches. When the heart problems that resulted from his childhood rheumatic fever caught up with him, Entering the hospital to have previously implanted artificial heart valves repaired, he died on the operating table on December 20, 1973, at the age 37. Rest in peace Bobby Darren, goodbye legend.